noches, uh, good evening, y welcome to this edition of Tertulia. Uh, we have Pedro Juan Hernández from the Center of Puerto Rican Studies here with us. Buenas, Pedro, ¿cómo estás? Buenas, hi, hi. Thanks, thanks for having us uh, and having me uh, as a Central Archivist uh, in, in your program. Thank you very much. Oh, it's a, it's a great pleasure for me personally having uh, gone to get images for so many years and having had the privilege of working with you and, and having your extensive knowledge of the collection being so generously, tú sabe, presentada, so one could look for images of Pura Belpré or, or images of Clemente Sotovele, so, so this is very special. Gracias, Pedro. Okay. Uh, let, let's, uh, let's just uh, give uh, our viewers a very brief recap, biographical recap of, of Pedro's uh, trajectory and achievement. Uh, Pedro Juan Hernandez is a senior archivist uh, of the Center for Puerto Rican Studies, and he served as archivist, uh, you know, from 1993 to 2004, becoming senior archivist from 2004 to the current year, to 2021. Um, this is, of course, the Centro de Estudio Puerto Riqueño, CUNY. Um, he has devoted his professional life to the preservation and dissemination of the Puerto Rican stateside historical legacy, our diaspora, uh, as the head archivist in the Department of the Puerto Rican Community Affairs. That was from 89 to 93. And, uh, and anyway, he's been 28 years uh, at Centro, pretty much helming the collection this, this, past, uh, this past decade, over a decade, really. Um, and so, in addition, he has been involved in so many projects that many of you might know about and some of you might not have heard about. And those include exhibitions, of course, like Nueva York, 1613 to 1945, at El Museo del Barrio. Uh, he was also El Barrio, Puerto Rican, New York, at the Museum of the City of New York. Um, the Barrio exhibit, I think, was 2010-11. Um, the Museum of the City of New York exhibit was in 2005. He also did labor, or participated, or helped with labor at Hunter College East Harlem Galleries. That's where Centro is now housed, you know? Um, and uh, that was in 2020, 2011, something like that, 2012. And he's also co-authored Pioneros, okay? Puerto Ricans in New York, uh, a wonderful volume, actually two volumes, volume one and volume two. And, uh, and anyway, and there's so many other things, but uh, let's, let's move on. Uh, Pedro Juan, um, you have a master's degree in history and you have said, and I quote, I have always been fascinated with history as a subject of study and a way to learn from the past. Could you give us an example of how the past helps us to better understand our present right now? Anything that comes to mind? Okay, uh, uh, I'm uh, uh, professionally trained as a, as a historian. I did my master in the University of Puerto Rico and uh, history has always been centered part of, of, of my life and, and and I would say that it, it is the, the important for 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 Puerto Ricans and for any other ethnic group that uh, need to learn and 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 and, and be aware of, of their own history. So uh, as a archivist I was influenced by by the nineteen in the nineteen seventies by the, the CDF that was Centro de Estudios de la Realidad Puerto Rican in, 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 in Puerto Rico. I'm a, a, a student of Fernando Pico and uh, Gervasio Garcia and Maria de los Angeles Castro. So th those were key uh, historians that influenced my, 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 my life. And, um, and I would say it was very also critical time period where uh, uh, we, uh, there was a movement to to uh, show that history is not only the the the, the, the documentation of the uh, uh, lead the political leaders is is uh, more broader and that uh, incorporate many voices of the uh, community as part of that history. So I, I'm always connected and, and concerned about history uh, uh, showcasing and telling the story of the common. The, people the, the 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 how the we are involved in into the 
the development and the and the cultural uh, uh, growth of, of the country as as, as, a, as a Puerto Rican. So uh, that that led my way to to the archives. I I work. Uh, uh, as, as a history student, we were supposed to go to, to the general archives, as you wanted in Puerto Rico, and and also we were uh, re, uh, requested to use primary sources to work with primary sources, and and to me it was uh, that was an amazing thing because for the first time you are not just writing a book of somebody talking about political leaders, but you are looking at the actual documents. And 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 uh, how they impact the life, how people uh, took action, and and and, and these changes, and, and and be part of the history. So uh, uh, so that part is it is important, and in, in that terms that that is the history of uh, it, it goes beyond the celebrities, and and uh, uh, I, I'm, uh, I remember. Uh, that I there was a an archivista uh, Luis de, de de la Rosa who was the archivist and uh, we always around ten and three uh, researchers and and staff and the archivo general take a break and we went out to the halls and they were talking about the projects that we were working on and and uh, I remember Luis de la Rosa who was this archivist who knew everything about so. Uh, without no, knowing it back then, I, I got influenced by him because he was the kind of archivist that was in, interacting with the with the researchers and uh, helping to connect and to hey, do you see this document? Oh, you are doing this, and uh, I I found it. I I never thought that that uh, my life would be connected in that sense uh, and the history, you know, like getting to document in the the, the, the Puerto Rican community. And, and and being part of that, uh, like an instrument, uh, 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 you know, so that... Uh, well, maybe that's the repetition. I wanted to know about a repetition in history. So I said a repetition in people. De La Rosa to Hernandez. So now it's Pedro Hernandez in New York, yeah. in the Centro, doing some of those connections that De La Rosa uh, did back in El Archivo General uh, allá en San Juan, ¿verdad? Puerta de Tierra, right? We're yeah, that's right, that's right, yeah, Puerta de Tierra. So I guess those breaks must have gone on in La Imperial. Did you walk over to La Imperial, you know? For oh, that was quite yeah. definitely. All these Cuban sandwiches and, and, and bocadillos and all the stuff, definitely was part of that. You and we used to, uh, uh, as part of a lunch break, uh, uh, Pico was always in the archives and he would take his lunch break and he would invite uh, the, the, the group of students that were, we were there and we would go for a walk and talking about history and talking about life and and it was kind of like a continuation and he was in a way engaging us in, in sharing uh, uh, our knowledge of so that that is uh, very special and I, and I think that I wanted to see archives as, as part of that you know a place where you find the, not the information but also you get to share that information and that you would be preparing yourself without not knowing it to take it to to others outside the, the archives. And you mentioned, um, you know, I, I didn't really know uh, Pico, but you mentioned uh, Gervasio and Maria de Los Angeles, and I have been privileged to hear them uh, speak every so often and, and to meet them. So how did they influence your, um, how did they influence your, your view of, uh, as an archivist today, if you look back, how, how did they, how did they help shape you over there at La Universidad de Puerto Rico? Well, uh, I took a lot of courses. Uh, as I, I said, I was part of the history program. So I took a lot of classes with uh, uh, Fernando Pico and Gervasio. So in, in that sense, they were part of the La, La Nueva Historia. Right. And that, 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 uh, uh, how they were looking at the, uh, the history in different ways. And also, uh, I was a student of Maria de los Angeles Castro. In, in fact, uh, uh, the, the, my job as an archivist, I got it through Maria de los Angeles Castro and Gervasio, who came to New York to uh, evaluate a collection uh, back then that uh, Nidia Velasquez, who was the, the director of the Migration Division, she has this found in, 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 the, in the facilities these many, do many documents that were being uh, part of the history of the agency. 
and, and Maria de los Angeles Castro and Herbazio evaluate that collection. And uh, in the process, they say, by the way, we have a student that we would like to recommend for, for this project that is coming to New York. And, and that's they really, so you can tell that they really make a huge impact in my life and, and change just at the moment that I was planning to come to New York. And do you, do you think that, that that experience, I mean, going to La Universidad de Puerto Rico, working with Gervasio and Maria de los Angeles, as well as Pico, and then, you know, and, um, and seeing that archive, archive de la Rosa, was that what, what perhaps sowed the seeds for you to become an archivist? Or did you actually, did you have something in your past? I don't know, coleccionar gallito, uh, I don't know, <laughs> paquine. Uh, did you collect uh, the bottle caps, you know, stamps? Was there something in your past that sort of, uh, you know, that, that speaks about that collecting uh, sort of like germ, right? That that really informs uh, someone as yourself, an archivist. Yeah, I, I, I definitely. Uh, I always was interested and uh, attracted by history because, and I always asking things about the present. My mother used to say, hey, Chico, you're always talking about the past. Don't ask those questions. Those are things that I don't want to talk about. She always kind of like at the end acquiesces to to, to me to answer some of my questions. So I'm always kind of curious about the, the how we come together and be what we are. And, and for that, you need to go back to the past and kind of look at the whole family trajectory and, and then you put it in a major context, like a, a, a town and then from that town in, 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 the, in the... So I always like that SSI, you know, like to, to do that and, and through uh, these scholars that, that we talk about, Pico and, and Herbacio and Maria de los Angeles. So that uh, uh, put me through the path. At that moment, I wasn't sure that I, I, I would become uh, an archivist, uh, but uh, I would say that, uh, you know, uh, finally I got it together. And in and, and, and that time period that, that, that about that possibility of, of working in, in a project of that magnitude, although I have worked in the archives with also as a college assistant from Maria de los Angeles and, and uh, Dolores Luque, Lolita. Right, so right. so I, I kind of was there and, and they finally kind of like pushed me. In, word, I, uh, in different ways, they influenced me. That I work as a, as a college assistant for, for Lolita and, uh, you know, so, uh, and then they were my, my, my professors. So I had to write my papers and I do research and and I back then the the uh, the history program were doing like it was requirement to go and do primary sources uh, research and and to write so in, in that way that kind of also uh, showed me that uh, history is still in the process of to be written and 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 they, it is important that information is available and it is important then that the researchers come and find the resources to write and share their findings and, and, and bring it to the, to, to the broader audiences. But let's leave history with a big H to the side right now. Let's talk about history with a small H. So what year do you arrive in New York? And what's, what's, what's the scene, Pedro? What, what did you gravitate towards other than the professional, you know, uh, what was what was the scene like, and what year did you get in uh, to New York? Well, well I, I by 1988 I was or for many personal reasons, and and I, uh, I I was trying to find myself and, and and professionally develop further than than I was able to do in Puerto Rico. So, and by 1989 I formally. Uh, did the move. I used to be a, a teacher in San Ignacio for for seven years. So I enjoyed that experience. I enjoy working with the Jesuits, but I was kind of willing to uh, engage in different things. And it happens that my personal and my professional life got intermingled in, in, the, in the sense that, that I was planning to come to New York and then I was planning to uh, look for a job. And then it happens that I get a good letter of recommendation that, you know, from the 
person who was the, in charge of the overseeing the, the, the project. And, and, and that basically, I came, uh, that's the reason that I came to, to New York. And that's, I met my, my husband back then. And, and that was an, another major and very important reason why I came to New York. Uh, I was, ¿Qué barrio? Uh, ¿A qué barrio? Where did you guys live? Like when you moved there? Or, or... Uh, uh, I, I moved uh, to another typical uh, expected neighborhood. I, I, I moved uh, to Woodside in Queens. And it uh, uh, was a mix of uh, Irish, but there are also some other Latinos. So it was really very mixed neighborhood. And then after that, uh, I, I moved to Forest Hills. So uh, that's, <laughs> that's another, that the usual. But I, I guess like when, when you're, you're married with people that are not from your own culture, you do this, this uh, com makes uh, it match. And and then you you move to the different neighborhoods and you starting to to get to know. So as uh, as part of my job, I I started to go into the communities and learning more because one of the things that happens uh, in Puerto Rico, at least happened to me, is that you don't know that much about the history of Puerto Ricans uh, in New York or any other place out of the island. And that I was like, I had some knowledge, but it was really not as, as uh, I will uh, later on learn that, uh, that all that history in Puerto Rico is completely related to the, the flow and, on, uh, and it's so uh, hard to understand how come they don't teach more about the history of, of Puerto Ricans stateside in, in the island. So to me, it was also an opportunity to explore that word and that uh, is connected with the documents I was working with. So tell me something, um, when when do you actually get to Centro? When does actually, do you, so right there, like 90, I mean, I, I do have it in the bio, of course. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I wor started uh, working in the, with the Migration Division uh, in 1989. I, I, I don't know if you remember, uh, back then, the, for the first time, uh, uh, Rafael Hernandez Colon decided to create a department that will be dealing with the, the migration division. And, and it, would, it would be the Department of Puerto Rican Communities Affair. And uh, Nidia Velasquez was the last director of that División de Migración. And she became the, the secretary at the uh, governor's cabinet level uh, of the, uh, that she was uh, what eventually would be the Department of Puerto Rican Community Affairs, and they have the priority project of, of, of the Archivo, to develop the Archivo. So I was hired for that project from 1989 to 1993. And um, in 1993, in 1992, there was a change of political parties in Puerto Rico. And one of the major issues on the island back then is that, that the Puerto Rican government should uh, withdraw from and the presence from from uh, uh, state side that it was unconstitutional the 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 involvement of Puerto Ricans uh, having a, an archives and, and having a, a government the archives became one of the main issues. Hot so, button topic. As, as, as you imagine, they shut down the archives and. It, it, according by the laws in Puerto Rico, it was decreed that it was unconstitutional, and the whole agency shut down. And uh, and throughout those four years that I was working there, I get uh, in contact with Melida Perez and Nelly Cruz and uh, all the people from Centro because uh, one of the recommendations they gave me is like when you get to New York go and contact the people in Centro, the Studio of Puerto Ricanos, because they, they have a lot of experience. So I early on get in touch with the people in Centro and of course with the archives and the library. And, and So you were already colleagues while you were doing with the exactly, agents that shut exactly. down, you already had colleagues, friendships, you know, like you were going in and out of Centro, I presume, every once in a while. Yeah, and I be, okay. yeah, I became part of the cent friends of the Centro Library and I get to know, you know, many people who were part of that group, uh, supporting group of the library and archives. And uh, so, uh, uh, and I tried to make sense of uh, uh, there was uh, at that time also Centro has started the the, the project of the archives of the 
uh, Puerto Ricans in New York in 1989. So that, that was a critical year in 1989. We started the archives in the Commonwealth, but we started also as a community, the archives of Centro. Uh, and uh, so by the time that they were about to shut down the the issue of what's going to happen with the archives became the thing that captured the attention of, of the journalists back then. And a, a group of colleagues from, from the library were protesting outside and, I, uh, and I was documenting the wrapping up the project. And so we, uh, the, the idea was to, to see how we can keep those archives in New York uh, because the feeling was that there, that was the history of Puerto Rican space, right? and that history need to be saved and preserved in, in where that community is. So that's uh, uh, at that moment I, I I was part of sharing some of the information of the, of what we have uh, accomplished in the archives uh, in, in those four years, and and become a movement to get the archives. And in central, and central to become the custodian, and uh, that's the story. <laughs> wow! So, what's the bedrock? If you, if we're going to talk about the bedrock, the most, the initial collections that Centro acquired, they come from that agency, or no? What, what's the most important foundational collection, in your opinion? You know, as an archivist, head archivist, what's a foundational collection in terms of specific person or papers? That, that you think speaks to the immigrant experience of Puerto Ricans in New York, to our, to our you know, Puerto Rican thing? What, what would be the, the, the core of that? Well, I guess it's a little bit like, like asking your parents who's their favorite son or, or daughter. So in, in a way, uh, what I found is that the archives were complementary. So from, from, from uh, the, for example, the, the, the Archivos Históricos de la Migración, was uh, documenting Puerto Ricans stateside from 1930 to 1989. And not only they were documenting that agency that uh, was uh, located in New York City, but they were located in, throughout 17 different locations in the Northeast and the Midwest and the Florida and, and, and the corridor of, of New England. So those agencies uh, documented Puerto Ricans, farm workers, they documented people looking for jobs, they documented people looking for employment, they documented people uh, looking for bilingual education or uh, getting titles and dealing with issues of discrimination. Uh, so as you see that, is a real, real broad, broad, you know, wealth of different issues that were impacting the Puerto Rican community. So that was the archives that I was working in the Commonwealth. In in the Centro, Centro, they were documenting the early pioneer community, uh, Puerto Ricans communities, like Jesus Colon, like Pura Beltre, like uh, United Bronze Parents Inc., uh, uh, Clemente Soto Vélez, uh, so, all those uh, uh, collections really kind of were important because as you know, for many, many years, it was told, uh, the, the story was, uh, especially uh, when Centro was created in 50 years, uh, 1973, it was that there was no history of Puerto Ricans, so there was no enough documentation. So going to uh, 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 find information about the Puerto Rican pioneers that got in, in New York in the 1920s after the, they granted the, the, the U.S. citizenship to Puerto Ricans. So that community was important to know the history and, and, and the collections of the archives that Centro was collecting at back then helped to tell that story. And, and, and like, for example, they, they eventually will develop the project that they launched at Voices of the Puerto Rican Migration and basically, that one is centered on, on the, on the uh, its importance of Jesus Colón and all the people that he uh, amazingly collected uh, different kind of documents. I think he knew that something needs to happen, and, and then he preserved a fantastic archive. It's a beautiful 
archives and then we got put away prey and and you, and everybody now knows put away prey uh beyond the, the, the library but back then just she still was this puerto rican librarian that doesn't know where she's gonna leave her papers in fact uh, we have a and she was part of a, of a movement to, to create an archives of Puerto Ricans here, even before Centro wanted. So, so it seems to me that there, there were other attempts to create archives of Puerto Rican history, especially the diaspora here. And it seems like Pura del Pre. Who else? Who are the precursors of the archives, both of the Commonwealth, you know, which, which had a very short life, and of Centro Estudio Puerto Ricanos? which has lasted a long time, and we hope goes all the way to the 22nd century. <laughs> who are the precursors of the archives? Pura Belpre, who, who else? Was, uh, no, I, I will take it beyond, even, even himself, he has some, uh, he felt like he, uh, I, I will take it to Arturo Alfonso Schomburg. Schomburg, okay, Schomburg. Uh, uh, as part of the, as you know, he was one of those revolutionaries that were living in New York in the 1890s. And it was part of the La Junta uh, Re Revolucionaria, the, you know, all the leaders and, and, and Puerto Ricans and Cubans that were living in New York fighting against Spain. And uh, Schomber, he was a Puerto Rican Afro descendant, uh, Puerto Rican, and he felt like uh, uh, many of the uh, independence leaders back then, they were not uh, uh, kind of acknowledging the, the, the African influence in Puerto Rican culture. And as we know, the stories that he crossed, the, the, <laughs> and then he said, no, I got to devote my life. Uh, well, he was already collecting things about African, uh, his influence in the history of the United States. And of course, many Puerto Ricans, uh, they, that part of that history, but he remained as a uh, documentary Puerto Ricans uh, and uh, the African diasporic experience. And after that, I would say that the, the, the person who kind of followed his steps and kind of, uh, I know that he was kind of like an admired uh, Schomburg, it was Jesus Colón. And, 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 and Jesus Colón was very important. And uh, I, uh, I, I found and, and, and uh, I got it through also America Tirado some information about uh, Jesus Colón, for example, in the 1960s, already uh, was trying to uh, deal with the Brooklyn Public Library, and he, he donated some documents. So he was fully aware that what he has. He gave them the small collection, and uh, it seems that they they were very grateful in, in 1965 of getting that collection, but it took them uh, till uh, 2018 to process that collection. So, but you know, they, they had it and, and uh, that it seems didn't work the way he was expecting. And then I, I, we found in his paper also that in the 1970s, he tried the, the New York Public Library and offered some documents and that didn't Pan out, and we, you find a, a letter from one of the acquisition the archivists there is apologizing because they uh, try, uh, they did not were able to put together the, the accepting the, the papers, and and they yeah, it looks like Jesus Colón say no, I had I found a place where I'm gonna leave the archives, but that wasn't really true. What he did is uh, uh, he went uh, in the 70s. He, he went uh, to the Brooklyn Historical Society and encouraged them to, to create a, a oral history project. And, and that oral history project, uh, he did not participate, but he recommended, he gave names. And he was about to die in, during that time period, so that's maybe one reason why he did not participate. But I would say that, uh, uh, remain as one of his legacies because then he kept all the papers and eventually those papers come back to life in uh, when Centro is re using the oral histories that they were done in, in the 1970s and, 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 and help them to track down the pioneers and Jesus Colón Archives were a wonderful treasure uh, and 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 that's uh, central to 
uh, basically the legacy of Jesus Colon as, as a way to build up all the history and all the documentation of the Puerto Rican community. Okay. But Abertu was part of that, but, okay. but uh, she comes at uh, another level. Well, we're talking supply side. Now let's talk about the consumers of history. You have in your talks and presentations, some of which I have been fortunate enough to, to check out. I was um, at uh, the Graduate Center not so long ago and there were archivists from the Dominican, the Cuban, like, and you were there uh, holding court for Puerto Rico. It was, uh, it was uh, great to see you. And, but even in, in many of your talks and presentations, you constantly emphasize the bond between the Centro and the, the Centro Estudio Puerto Riqueño and the community it serves. So, so let's talk now about the consumer side, like the people that go to Centro. Talk to us since all, after all those years of helping, let's say, artists like myself, when I need a picture of Clemente Sotoveles to do a poster or Pura Belpre to paint her, you know, for, for, for a homage, that kind of stuff. What's, what's the consumer of our history uh, like at Centro? Well, besides the, the scholars, that they will be attracted and will follow uh, whatever they, they, they think there's information and, and documents that help them to, 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 to do their PhDs or to do their masters or uh, to bring it in the classroom. I would say that uh, Centro, as, as you know, is, is, is a hybrid uh, institution in the sense of that it's an academic uh, research center and the library and archives the, the library was responsible to, to have all the books that were needed to, uh, to about Puerto Rican history. And, and uh, the, the library initially was to be a supportive unit of the researchers, but they soon realized that uh, nowadays you find Puerto Rican books everywhere, but back then in the 70s, it was hard to find any Puerto Rican books. So the library comes and, and, and the, the consumer goes beyond that academics uh, and, 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 and people who were teach, professors that were teaching in the Black and Puerto Rican studies, uh, Puerto Rican studies throughout New York City and, and uh, becomes uh, the center always combine that uh, history and, and create different kind of products that, uh, uh, that kind of, uh, are brought uh, to bring together and, and, and in, in, in engage people finding more about the history and, 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 the, and the, is, as the community definitely is, uh, is a very important. The, the community uh, support works at different levels. Like we may find people uh, that, that uh, what we call extraordinary, ordinary people, that have amazing lives and, and, and they have kept the documents throughout the years and they didn't know where to, where, what will happen with those documents. Many of them got lost. Uh, and, but when Centro started, they started, Centro became, without wanting, became uh, one place where to have the archives. So we, we bring them together, donors, and we bring together the community and and uh, soon Centro found itself by by 1989 that they need to do something and and that's what uh, Nelly uh, uh, Perez comes into the picture and uh, and uh, to joining uh, other researchers from Centro Amir Cartirado Blanca Vasquez uh, that uh, were in contact with the community and putting together a plan to develop an archives. And what about the children and the youth? I mean, the, the, the Centro during your tenure, like would you be like high school class? I mean, you're a, an educator in San Ignacio, a prestigious school in Puerto Rico. Uh, so so where, do you have a program where public school kids have, have or, or at times do public school kids come and check out uh, things like Jesus Colón or presentations on Pura del Pre and uh, that kind of thing? Is that, is that part of the, the outreach? Yeah, definitely. Uh, what we uh, attempt to do, uh, we so event eventually Centro established the archive in 1989. They struggled to, to have a line for, for an archivist that will take care of the continue the processing of, of the collections. And, and, and 
Uh, not only that, uh, we as, as a unit in, 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 in a tandem with the Centro in general, uh, create different uh, efforts, uh, outreach efforts to different audiences. And, and that's when, when we started in, uh, inviting groups to come over the Centro and welcoming them. It will be children, uh, elementary school, and, and Centro will do presentations and, and, and obviously put up that prayer will be one of the favorite subject matters, but also in by others uh, young. And usually what we do is, uh, again, we, we at, uh, will welcome groups or we organize presentations for them uh, or facilitate access to some of the documents. So it works on many, many levels and the audiences are very broad and we also not only prepare uh, tailor things for a specific group, but we started doing different activities. Like we want to do show what is in, in the archives about Las Bodegas. So we, we did an exhibit, you know, and, and invites a scholar, but also we did, you know, a, 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 a research and pull out some of the documents. So in a way, what we try to do is also to to uh, show uh, the researchers uh, what other resources we have. So it's constantly the, the change to bring different people from different sectors of the community. Uh, and uh, not only Puerto Ricans, from other countries that also come looking for, uh, to learn about what Puerto Ricans did in particular time period about different issues like bilingual education, uh, you, you name it, uh, police brutality or all those things. So we, we get a, like a very broad audience that is finding things in the archives and 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 and, and central in general also is putting out so many different products that are you know to 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 uh, make accessible to the different audiences. Pedro, on an inconvenient question, but okay. So there was struggle at the beginning to find a line for the archivist. Now all of a sudden, I'm realizing and I'm going into a panic like. Oh my God, Pedro's heading out. So when I need that next picture for my next serigrafia, um, how, how, are you going to be in some way, shape, or form part of a transition? I mean, who's who's taking it over from you? Well, who's okay? Uh, yeah, and one of, one of my personal concerns is is uh, I feel like this is kind of like passing the torch, and right. and, and uh, like Nelly that did with me, she kind of prepared me and took me to to meet with the donors and and. Uh, go to conferences and uh, hear her doing presentations. So that is very important for our institution. I think that uh, uh, I'm looking forward that they hire a new archivist to kind of take off some of the responsibilities and things that I'm doing. I'm sure uh, they will do. Uh, but also we have um, uh, still some very knowledgeable staff that, we, that join us as a new generation. And, and, and new blood and uh, formally trained as librarians and with all the uh, uh, knowledge of the technology. So we, we have a digital archivist, uh, Lindsay uh, uh, Whitwer, that she is taking care of digitizing and, and led, lead the, the project of digi digitization of the archives. In fact, part of the uh, centros uh, during this COVID-19 the archives continue uh, providing services. And that was uh, possible because uh, that digitization program that we have undertaken right. in the last years, and, and uh, people now can, can get 25,000 digital images from their archives. And they can uh, uh, find um, uh, 25, uh, uh, 40, around 40,000 images and 176 collections are already out there for the people in the, people now want to find things in, in digital, so now that's available. And there are over 700 other histories online that people can download. And uh, people can search things by uh, uh, names that, that traditionally are not part of the geographical terminology like Eloisaida, El Barrio, so uh, uh, also we, uh, uh, she's been leading that team. So that's, that part work is, shows how important it is at, at, at this juncture, but also 
uh, from uh, continue and going on from there. We also have a uh, 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 Amiba Arocho, who's going to be the library manager, and in a way, he's taking the the, the what uh, Amir Cantirado used to do, and, and so in, in a way, you know, those are at, at this moment are, are the two people who are standing there and doing the work, but they need more staff to uh, to continue. They have some assistance in in that digitization project, but. We still need more, and in, in terms of like, uh, so many people are looking and, 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 and working in the archives. And as you say, they expect so many things from, from the from center in general, but also from the library in the archives. Well, I want to take on something, I mean, because we've been talking uh, big picture in general uh, thus far, and I want to bear down on, on, on something very special. It's like, a, in a way, like a boutique project, and, and you were, you together with, uh, with Felix Matos, kind of bore it to fruition, and that was that peculiar and particular and specific view of our pioneers in a very handsome, modest, but still very handsome volume that I think, um, that I think is very, it's, it's close to a lot of people's hearts. Uh, in, in, our, in our libraries, and that is the, the volume uh, Pioneros. I'm talking about the 2001 uh, volume first, because there was a, a second uh, volume in 2010. And in the first one, you work with Felix Matos, and the second one with Virginia Sanchez Corrol. Um, talk to me, uh, and I think it's very special because the love, the attention, is sort of our story is sort of you know goes through the prism of Pedro Juan the archivist choosing the photographs with a connoisseur's eye also um, you know an expert such as Felix Matos who also cares lives some of this and talks about it talk to me about that those two beautiful uh, volumes okay that, that uh, it came as, as an idea uh, when uh, uh, fellow uh, uh, now it's chancellor, no? Uh, right. as, uh, as central director, and he has seen the uh, the, the product of of, of uh, that photography accessible to 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 the working class and everybody audience in, in a very non uh, uh, strictly academic is showcasing the, the history of, of different ethnic organizations and and he, he saw the, the product and he immediate, immediately knew that that uh, that was something that it can be bring to to centro and he contacted the editor and said hey you need to do something about puerto ricans and and uh, you are using all this english and can we do bilingual uh, descriptions of the became a project and and he invited me uh, as an archivist to help him to to find and and I think he was also very uh, used it as a way also uh, for him to learn about the archives and so we work and, and, and we knew each, each other from San Ignacio back then so so it was a, a, also an opportunity for us And uh, so the idea was, okay, what are we going to, you know, what's the theme and, and what are the images? And we started a process and it was fantastic to work with, with uh, uh, Fe Felo. 
you know, because he uh, is a very sensitive guy. And, and so he, he understood, he asked questions and he helped to, to, to put it together and, and make it nicely. And, and I think that was a, 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 a book that it was produced by, by out, out of Centro and it was a, a format, a friendly format and very interesting because uh, it allowed us to, to tell the story of the Puerto Rican community uh, by using some selected documents. And, and, and uh, it, so it was also an opportunity for the donors to see how the archives work at a different level, not at the academic level, but right. very basic structure. And and uh, so I, 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 uh, people's reaction was very positive and 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 we were very glad because it, it was a product that people took on and and they really celebrated and 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 eventually uh, we always talk about there was some Finnish product you know uh, history and 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 I was uh, uh, fortunate that that Virginia Sanchez Corral also came right. to. The second part that uh, of the and and the people everywhere we we get phone calls from people in New York but people in Chicago and other places that we're starting to do uh, more of that kind of ethnic uh, ethnic uh, uh, com communities uh, through the this little product uh, of, of and you know like to quote something totally odd you know like that Paul Simon song every generation throws a hero up the pop chart so. Will the goalposts keep moving, Pionero Uno, Pionero Do? Will you in your retirement perhaps come up with a Pionero Tre and work with the 80s crowd and 90s crowd? I mean, is this something or not really? Um, that's yeah, I would say that we, this is about uh, passing the torch in, in a way your audience is part of the people that we are passing the torch because uh, many people out there have different ideas or no archives or or no different things that can be done. So and now I think uh, it will be very significant that new audiences, new people, new researchers, new community leaders, people from the community engage and, 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 and come to the Central Library and Archives. It's a space that is open to the public and, and Central fought for that, that they, they, like the, the Hunter College and, and allow people from the community. So that's so important that people come, keeps coming and, and they, like, they can do a Pionero stress and they can do so many things that, that they will find uh, fantastic information. We have a very rich and very significant history. And uh, I think like uh, people have learned that from saying that there was not enough history of Puerto Ricans in New York, now every project that and, and different books and, and, and different products are coming up showing the, the, that our community has made a difference and they have struggled and they have changed uh, through the struggle, uh, have made many changes that are now are taken for granted, right. but they were Puerto Ricans, the one who opened the door. And so that's, that's very important. I, to I totally agree. I think uh, I think it's a, it's a remarkable story. It's a remarkable it story, and it's, uh, we're very fortunate to have Centro as a repository of the documents that sort of you know document that story. And um, and uh, we've had you know top people like like Nelida, like myself, Anilgar, you know the people that have cuddled it because it's been new. It, I mean, it's still relatively new. I know 70, 50 years. <laughs> In the it's history. Gonna be 50 years, it's going to be 50 years, but it still is nothing. Like You're right. Right. You know. I mean, it's still tender. So we're still growing. We're still in some sort of, you know, infancy going towards teenage years, whatever. So, but anyway, I have, um, I, there's a quote of yours I very much like. Um, it was an essay published in the Latino Research Review. Um, uh, and uh, you describe the purpose of archiving uh, as this. The archives are not about immortality or turning these people into godlike figures whose legacies will seemingly never end. It is rather about finding ourselves in their histories and understanding our own struggles through theirs. Um, as an archivist, how do you think, end of quote, I'm just now asking you, how do you think um, 
what's the best way um, of achieving this purpose, you know, of, uh, of finding ourselves in their histories and, and understanding and understanding theirs. I, I, I have, before we you start, um, I want to say that we have had an answer here at the Clemente Soto Vélez with, uh, with Manuel Moran particularly, and hopefully now going on with Libertad Guerra, where we have gone to you to look for, let's say, Pura Belpre, and we have created a festival and honored Pura Belpre, and people from the Americas, but from Europe and Asia, have done work about Pura Belpre. Of course, most of us have been Puerto Rican. We've also addressed people like uh, uh, Correter, or, or, or of course, our namesake, Clemente Soto Vélez. So that's been our solution here, uh, or our, our, our way of, of, of doing with this. But again, you know, for, for other people, how do, how do you find yourself in the history and, uh, and understand your own struggle through theirs, thanks to an archive? Yeah, I, I, I would say it's, it's a change of mentality uh, that we need to realize that even our parents were not the political leaders or the big guys in the making the history. Uh, the history is more complex and, and we, the leaders without the people and the people who really are the ones who struggle and do the, the, the heavy lifting uh it's not possible you know so that i think that's a change of mentality i used to have a, 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 a an activity that i used to do with my students and i would ask them how you and your family are part of that history and, and it kind of i was influenced by all that things that were going on in puerto rico back then and for them it was a big struggle to to say that history you know is, is men and women changing and, and, and creating and, and making new changes and, and organizing and, and uh, uh, basically creating new organizations to respond to issues and problems. So the first thing that, that I feel like that we need to, is that history is not an alien discipline, it's part of our daily life. You walk around and you see and surrounded by things that are done by by people and that uh, has some sacrifices I, and there's a lot of history so uh, I, I guess because I'm a his, uh, uh, the training of history you go out and you see okay these are columns uh, you know go back to the Romans or go back to the uh, and uh, or my ancestors the Af Africans did this or, 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 or XYZ you know so then then I, I, I guess you you get a broader perspective that that uh, we are need to know that history and it's the the, the, the the thing how how we are participant of that history so that give us more power to to so we know what was done and what need to be done and 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 where we're still standing at this at this particular juncture like uh there okay. is like for example police brutality you look at, at the at, at different collections in Centro, Diana Caballero, or, or, you know, um, and there are so many people important that they documented that, so that's no, nothing new. And, and, and they have proposed things and they are not, the institutional and the government is not changing, but people have identified what are the issues and how we can close down the, the you know, eliminate some of those issues and problems. And, and so that's that kind of you know uh, kind of that's very important. The, 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 our mentality need to change. I think like like young people are doing now when they go out and protest and black movement is that that we need to have some issues that we are raising that need to be changed. And and you see young people doing that change, you know, and pushing for that. So it's that process of of the history is always kind of like a struggle to to put things and, and make things happening. And, and, and that's always there. And, and besides that, I, I also wanted to bring up, I was very heartened to know that thanks to you, the digitizing of the archives, you know, in this particularly difficult moment, Centro, um, the archives are, are serving, you know, are, are sending material, people are looking at the material, thanks to the digital, you know, frontier, you know, you cross that frontier years back, you, You've been and you're still on it, but um, so let's talk a little bit about COVID. Uh, 
to end. I mean, we're still in, 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 in the midst of this. We seem to be getting vaccines rolled out where, you know, we are, we are getting vaccinated or some people are, more should be vaccinated shortly thereafter. So perhaps you, we, can, we can talk to our viewers about the, you know, what, what, what's, what's that looking like uh, historically? Um, what records do you think we'll get? Are we gonna get vaccination records from the year 2021? At, at Centro, um, and, and also a few words of hope going forward, because we really need some, some hope. <laughs> you know, it, it's, been a, it's been a tough slap. Um, again, just in general, the COVID, uh, COVID reality, what do, what do you see? Yeah, that, that, that's kind of a hard one, and at the same time, it's not, you know, we are going through so much pain and, 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 and seeing so many disruption in our society, and it's not the first time that we as humans have dealt with pandemia, and, and, and then people tend to forget about them, and, and you know, uh, you, you, you got it to the 1918, you know, but there was like, before in Europe, there's so many, you know, the La Peste Bubonica and so many other uh, pandemias that were really killing and making uh, 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 changing the world, yeah, like yeah, yeah. Of, of, of people. So, uh, what I, I, I uh, some organizations they have their resources that they 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 are engaged in in in, in the collecting effort and, and involved. Uh, so unfortunately, we don't have those resources. So what we got is the community that is out there, and they are participating, and they are uh, 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 struggling with those issues, and they are creating different initiatives. And uh, those are things that Centro is reacting as, as the Center for Puerto Rican Studies. It, it, it is getting an immediate response right away in terms of like developing different programs. And, and the archives, it has a different way that eventually some of those things will make it into the archives and, and, and people will bring uh, things because uh, they uh, recognize uh, Centro as, as a repository of the, of the Puerto Rican diaspora history and, and, and uh, that will help that we don't have the human resources to be out or go out there, but they hopefully they eventually will. Yeah, and I know Centro has different programs that we like, some other histories are happening now, um, people talking about the, the issues, that uh, how they deal with the day-to-day, -day, uh, that people need to document that even it seems so very basic, but it's so right. important because it shows how this pandemic touched everybody at, at so many different levels. And you, Pedro Juan, Pedro Juan Hernandez, about to retire from the archives, like what, 20 years, odd, give, give or take, um, you know, working, and, and what, what's next? What, what do you want to do? What, because I, I think I, Pedro Juan para rato, this is just one chapter closes, perhaps a long chapter. So what are you, what are you looking forward to now in, 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 this, new, in this new space, this new life, this new freedom for, for one? <laughs> well, I, I, I guess like uh, I'm not that different from the rest of the people. We've been one year already of this pandemic, so I, I, I guess uh, the uh, we lost the many people that are very uh, important in our community, and and even people, you know, the common uh, people out, out there that that we lost them. So uh, I guess at this moment, the priority is, this, is to get over this and hopefully that people uh, find a way to, to basically to prepare themselves better and try to avoid to fall back into the pandemia. And, and that we are seeing it every day in the news. So oh, I'm you're, you're dodging the question. I don't know what, I don't want to know about other people. I want to know about Pedro Juan Hernandez. So Pedro Juan for now, uh, I, I, I would say from the distance, I'd be looking, the archives is always something so dear to me and, and my personal life is so intertwined with my personal life in, in some ways. And, and, and uh, I, I would like to see Centro, uh, uh, taking the archives continuing the fantastic work that we have been doing 
and and, and Centro uh, as the institution continue. And I will, in the meantime, what I will do is basically try to to find a life out of the 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 work uh, environment. But in a way, you know, you're in New York, so Puerto Ricans we are all over, and 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 that history is is, is continuing. So I'll, I'll be learning. I would say probably I'm trying to kind of my priority is to get the the vaccine, <laughs> my schedule already, and hopefully uh, uh, going back to enjoy New York City is the place that that I like. I like to go to museums and and I like to to get involved in arts and all those things. So uh, I would like to see that you know to to engage myself in in a different level. Gracias, Pedro Juan, and thanks to all that have joined us this, this evening uh, for, you know, for this uh, tertulia, for this conversation. Um, I think it's been an epic, uh, Pedro Juan's tenure at the archives, and, and a wonderful epic at that. Like I said, my own testimony is one of, of gratitude to have someone so versed, so deft at knowing what to look, where to look for it, and, and to just, like, uh, bring, it, bring it forward. Uh, any last words, Pedro Juan? We are no, done. I, 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 I will invite people to, to visit the website and look at the collection and, and find about the life of these uh, fantastic, extraordinary, ordinary people that we have. And they have, uh, that's a rich history. Uh, everybody can find something. It doesn't have to be Puerto Rican. And, and basically, uh, the archives is a wonderful resources and, and we need to treasure and take care of that. And I hope that people understand that it is, is, is in their hands and, and uh, we hope that they support the work that we have been doing. Thank you. Buenas noches. Good evening. Take care. <laughs>